Hi, so I received a question from one of my students that is based on volume contraction as an effect of relativistic velocities and uh, it goes something like this. A sphere of radius A is placed in a rest frame of reference. It is set in motion with a velocity of kc, k less than 1. Calculate the percentage loss in volume of the sphere as observed by an observer at rest with respect to the moving sphere. Now, uh, length contraction is one of the famous consequences of special theory of relativity. That means if I try to measure the length between two points when I am at rest with respect to the object, then the length that I measure and if I try to make the measurement of length between those same two points, if I am in relative motion with respect to that object, those two measurements will be different. In fact, if I am in relative motion with respect to an object, the lengths of that object appear to be contracted with respect to me, who is uh, in relative motion with respect to that object. All right. And one effect of this simple length contraction is uh, changes in area, shape or volume of an object or a rigid body. Now, one important thing to keep in mind is that uh, changes in length or length contraction or Lorentz contraction happens only in the direction of relative motion, never in perpendicular directions to it. So length contraction is something that happens only in the direction of relative motion, but not perpendicular to it. So if you look at the radius of the sphere along, let's suppose x axis, it's the same as along y axis, along z axis, if they are measured by an observer, we rest with respect to the sphere. But let's suppose the sphere starts traveling, okay, at a particular velocity, and the observer is at rest with respect to this observer, what is going to happen is that the length of that sphere along the direction of relative motion will appear to have contracted with respect to the observer in rest. Okay, so the length of that sphere along the direction of relative motion will appear to have contracted with respect to an observer at rest if the sphere is traveling with a velocity, something which is uh, near the speed of light. So what that makes is, is that that changes the whole shape of the sphere itself. So it's not a sphere anymore, it's a spheroid. So the radius or the length between these two points is not twice a anymore, but rather something else. It is, I'm going to call it as twice a dash. Okay, so the length between this point and this point is not twice a as it was earlier. Earlier, this was the diameter of the sphere, which is twice a, right? But now when measured by an observer in relative motion, it is twice a dash. And both of these quantities are related by the length contraction formula, which is the measured length is equal to the proper length multiplied by one minus v square upon c square. Okay, what is v here? The v is already given to us as twice a root over one minus k c square upon c square. That's it. So if we let, look at what is a dash, a dash is nothing but a because the two gets cancelled root over one minus c square c square gets cancelled k square. All right. So the distance between these two points is 2a dash where a dash is related to a by this manner. But the distance between these two points is the same as before because lengths do not contract in perpendicular directions uh, with respect to the relative motion. Similarly, with respect to the z axis also between these two points, the lengths will not contract. So the length will not contract in the y axis or in the z axis. It will only appear to be contracted in the x-axis if the relative motion is in the x-axis. So what is the volume of a sphere with respect to its rest frame of reference? So volume of a sphere, let's suppose with respect to rest frame of reference, I'm going to call it as V, is nothing but 4 by 3 pi A cube, where A is the radius of the sphere. What is the volume of a spheroid now? When made a measurement by an observer in relative motion, let me call it as V dash. So the volume of a spheroid is usually 4 upon 3 pi a square multiplied by a dash. This is the volume of a spheroid. So let us make a comparison between these two. Okay. So this is nothing but 4 upon 3 pi uh, a square a dash is nothing but multiplied by a root over 1 minus k square. So this is nothing but 4 by 3 pi 
a cube root over 1 minus k square. Now, if I want to compare the fractional change in volume or the percentage change in volume, what I can do is, let's suppose I want to calculate the fractional change. I'm going to say del V upon V is how much? Percentage change is just fractional change into 100%, okay? So the fractional change is nothing but the original volume, which is 4 upon 3 pi A cube minus the new volume, which is 4 upon 3 pi A cube 1 minus k square divided by the original volume which is 4 upon 3 pi a cube. This gets cancelled, right? What are we left with then? We are just left with 1 minus root over 1 minus k square. So this is the answer. Now, if I want to uh, approximate it to some better value, let's suppose that I am talking about k which is very very less than uh, 1, let's suppose then k square is going to be a very, very small quantity, okay? So I'm going to approximate this answer to 1 minus 1 minus k square to the power half, okay? If I want to expand it, this simply becomes 1 minus. So if I just retain the first two terms, so this is k square here. If I just retain the first two terms because the higher order terms are going to be too, too small. So this is simply going to be 1 minus half k square. Okay, so the 1 and the 1 gets cancelled. This is just left. So this is half k square, which is nothing but 0 0.5 k square. So this is your answer for the fractional loss or fractional change in the volume of a sphere uh, as measured by an observer in relative motion in comparison to its volume at rest. That's it. So this is a very simple problem on volume contraction. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.